Before you continue watching the video, pause the video here, go to the Desmos links that's provided to you here. It's also in your textbook. You are asked to answer particular questions. So go ahead. You probably have the transformation project with you or go ahead and look in the textbook, but you need to complete the transformation project. All of these functions are plotted in Desmos and then you have to move the sliders to make some observations. Make those observations and then come back and then we will discuss it together. So go ahead, pause the video here, do the transformation project only when you have made all the conclusions that were asked of you, then continue watching this video. When you open the Desmos project, transformation project, you saw a file that had a whole bunch of functions and you had to make some observations. We'll just do a few of the functions. You had to do the remaining ones. So f of x is the absolute value function. And if you looked at the function y minus k equals f of x, which is also the same as y equals f of x plus k. So if you have the y minus k and you move to k, if k is positive, function moves up. k is negative, function moves down. And you saw that with all the functions. So hopefully you made your own conclusions if I wanted to change the function f to say the log function or the exponential functions, so you first have to uh, go back and change the f to an r so that we have r function. And then let's see what happens when we move the k. You can see that the graph moves exactly the same way. When k is positive, goes up, k is negative, goes down, but this function also has an asymptote. So how do you determine that? Right now the asymptote is y equals 0. And so now let's move both the asymptote and the graph and see. You can see the exact same thing happens. Even the asymptote moves up and down with the graph. All right, let's see what happens when you move the slider for h. So we'll have to have f of x function, let's say, and y equals f of x minus h. So instead of y minus k, now we have x minus h for the input. And again, when h is positive, moves to the right. When h is negative, moves to the left. We'll see why that happens in a little bit. But right now, we're just trying to see if our observations are working for all the functions. So if you do log function, log function has asymptote, a vertical asymptote, which is x equals 0. So let's go plot the asymptote. And as we would expect, everything moves to the right or to the left, depending on the value of h. All right, let's get rid of the asymptote. You would wonder what happens to functions if it's just a relation and not a function. So if you probably plotted the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1, and then take a look at what happens if you move the k, same thing happens. So these observations occur not just for functions, but also for relations. OK, now the question is, what is the effect of the number b on the function? So let's take a look at the function m, since we haven't plotted that one yet. We'll get rid of the circle, because we don't need that anymore. So let's take a look at what happens if you have y divided by b. And instead of f function, we're working with m function. So instead of adding or subtracting, we're dividing by number 1 or bigger. 1, nothing happens. But number bigger, you can see that 2, 0, 0 remain fixed because 0 times anything is 0. But as you move the b to a positive number bigger than 1, the function gets vertically pulled up, or it's called vertical stretch. OK, so instead of dividing by b, where b is a number bigger than 1, what happens if you multiply y by a b where b is bigger than 1? So as you move your b, when b is bigger than 1, b times y, it's a vertical compression. Whereas y divided by b, it is a vertical stretch. You can see that. OK, 
Let's take a look and see what happens when you multiply or divide by a number on the inside. So let's keep the same function in m and look at m of ax, where a is bigger than 1. You can see it's a horizontal compression. When you divide, you expect it to have a horizontal stretch. So the observations are very parallel to the x and the y. Everything that happens in the x direction happens also in the y direction. It just depends on which one you are observing. You can have all of these changes occur at once. So for example, let's take the circle again and let's graph. Let's do division by A and division by B, subtract H and subtract K and see what kind of shape we get. So we'll get rid of the M graph and bring our circle back. We would expect all of these changes to occur simultaneously. So first, let's just move our H. You can see left, right. This is up down. You can see all these changes can occur at once. So this circle moved down and then to the right, got stretched horizontally and also stretched vertically. So all the observations you made work for functions and for relations. Let's put these all together and get the terminology and understand why this is happening. Because if we understand why, then we'll be able to graph any function knowing what happens when you add, subtract, multiply, or divide by constants. So let's go see if we can articulate the terminology and then see why this is happening. All right, let's talk about vertical shift and what that means. So first, do you remember what we did for our graphs? If we have, let's say, a parabola and we want to shift it up so you have y equals f of x, and we want to shift it, let's say, up 3. So what is actually happening? Look at the coordinate 0, 0. When x is 0, output is 0. But in the new graph, when x is 0, output is 3. So how can we input x equals 0, which will give you f of 0, and then still have the output be 3? because f of 0 is 0, you would have to add 3 to f of x. Or you can say that the new output, in order for the new output to be 3 more, you would have to start out with 3 less. Seems weird, but that's exactly what happens. So look, if I have y coordinate 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, which would be consistent with f of 0 being 0. So you have to see when my x coordinate is still my old input. Old input producing the same output of 0. The only way that's going to happen is if the new input is 3 more. Then 3 more minus the 3 will give you the same, input, same output. It might sound a little confusing, but if you pay attention, you will see what it is. Original output, which is f of x, plus 3. Or new output minus 3 is the old output. That's how you can think of it. Similarly, if you went down 3, then you will have what? Instead of y minus 3, you will have y plus 3. So a vertical shift is simply that every single coordinate, the y coordinate, is moving exactly the same distance. So whether you trace the 0 point or x equals 1, instead of 1, you're at 4. Instead of negative 1, 1, you're at negative 1, 4, and so on. Every point on the graph moves exactly the same distance up or same distance down. Another way to think of it is you can have y minus a constant equals function, original function, or original function plus a constant. If the constant is positive, you go up 3. 
If the constant is negative, you go down 3. If the constant is with the y, then y minus 3 makes it go up 3. y plus 3 makes it go down 3. So depending on where the constant is will dictate where your function goes up or whether it goes down. All right, so if you have a relation, let's say this relation, same thing if you want to go up. So here you're going up so many units, then you would basically replace all the y's in the equation with y minus k. y minus k will take it k units up. So what do you think will happen if I want to go down? So let's say I have this relation here. What would I have to do? Replace all y with what to make it go down k units? Pause the video here and see what we would have to do. Good, we would have to do y plus k. So if you replace all y's in the equation with y plus k, your whole graph will shift down k units. So if here's a relation, looks like a figure 8. But it is a relation, and you can do the same. If you replace all the y's with y minus k, it will go up k units. If you have a relation and you replace all y's with y plus k, it will go down k units. All right, let's take a look at horizontal shift. So instead of the y-coordinate, we'll now be working with the x-coordinate. And remember, our observations were that there are parallel structures for x and y coordinates. So if you have a function and you want it to go shift to the right k units, remember, to go up k units, we had y minus k. So to go right k units, you would have to do what? Good. Replace the x with x minus some number. So in this case, it will be f of x minus 3. Another way you can think of it is now the output is remaining the same. So what should be the new input to produce the same output? It would have to be 3 more because if the out, if the new input is 3 more and you subtract the 3, you get the original x value, which will produce the y coordinate that you want. So that is why it's x minus 3. It's very important to understand why things are happening and not just memorize that, oh, if it's a minus 3, you go right 3. Because then if some little changes are made, you might not know what to do. So again, if you go to the left 3, what do you think the equation would be? You would have to replace the x with x plus 3. Now here we cannot do any algebra and move it to the other side like we did with the y because it's stuck inside this input brackets of the function. So in general then, horizontal shift is when every single point on the graph moves exactly the same distance either to the left or to the right. So for example, let's see 0, 0. 0, 0 moved to 3, 0. Y coordinate remains the same. X coordinate moved 3 to the right, which means that if I look at the point 1, 1 will move to 4. Negative 1 moving this way will go to 2. So you can see every single coordinate moves 3 to the right. Similarly to the left, when you have f of x plus 3. Because this is a parabola y equals x squared, that means that this parabola is the graph of y equals x minus 3 bracket squared. And the one on the left would be x plus 3 in parentheses squared. So you're starting to see some patterns that known power functions, then if you want to shift them, will take a different form. We'll do that in the next section or two. So if you have a relation and you want to move it to the left, what would we have to do? If you want to go to the left, you would have to replace all x's with x plus something. So if you move h units to the left, you would have to replace all x in the equation with x plus h. If you have a relation and you want to move it to the right, replace all x's with x minus h. 
and that will move it to the right edge units. So a horizontal shift is where whatever original graph you have, every single point moves exactly the same distance, either to the right or to the left, depending on whether you have x plus a number or x minus a number, and that number dictates how many units you move horizontally. So if you have another relation, just like we did before, again, if I want to move to the left, moving to the left, x plus h. Moving to the right, replace everything with x minus h. All right, let's take a look at, here's another function. So you have a function y equals f of x. What if you look at y equals 2 times f of x, or 3 times f of x, or y divided by 3 equals f of x. All of those will produce this vertical stretch because y, 0, when the 0 is the output, 0 times any number is 0. So all x-intercepts will remain where they are because when you multiply 0, you just get still 0. 0 times a number is 0. However, let's say 0, 2. If I multiply everything by 3, by everything I mean the y coordinate. So if you multiply 3 times f of x, so 2 times 3 will give me 6. Since that's the highest point, that's where it went. Every y coordinate here got multiplied by 3 and got stretched vertically. That's because the ends were stuck on the x-axis. So if you have x-intercepts, the ends get stuck, but everything else got multiplied by a number bigger than 1, so it got stretched by 3. If you rewrote that as y divided by 3 equals f of x, then you can also think of it as f of x is the original y coordinate. In order to get the same output, my y would have to be 3 times as big, and that's why it becomes a vertical stretch. So here we have another relation, and if I multiply everything by 3, the y coordinates, I will get a vertical stretch. Now, this number 3 was bigger than 1. So a vertical stretch by a factor of b where b is bigger than 1, all the original x coordinate remain unchanged. The only thing that changes is the y coordinates in the original graph they get multiplied by a factor of whatever the number is that you're multiplying by. And again, all the x-intercepts stayed. And the only thing that changed is all the y-coordinates got multiplied by 3. You can see why it stretches it. So if you replace all the y's in the equation by y over b, y over b produces a stretch of a vertical stretch by a factor of b where b is bigger than 1. Well, what happens if b is between 0 and 1? Well, if you have, let's say, original graph is this black graph, and I divide by 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So it's the opposite effect. It will get vertical compression. So that means that our number b would have to be between 0 and 1, so still a positive number. And then what happens? Well, all the y's get replaced with y over b again, but because b is smaller than 1 and bigger than 0, all the numbers, all the y coordinates got smaller, which means it got vertical compression. So vertical compression by a factor of b all x coordinates remain the same, and the y coordinates basically would have to get multiplied by a factor of b to produce the same f of x. That's what that is. So here's another example. And if you multiply all the y coordinates by, say, one third, you would get a vertical compression. Horizontal stretch. So here's a graph. And if I multiply or divide by numbers, look what happens. In this case, what are we doing? Why don't you pause the video and see what would produce this? 
Again, the y coordinates are unchanged. So which means whatever changes you make are happening on the inside with the x. Because everything is a parallel structure between x and y, it should give you a hint. Remember, in the vertical stretch, we had y divided by b, producing the vertical stretch or vertical compression, depending on whether the b was bigger than 1 or b was between 0 and 1. Pause the video and see what will produce this kind of stretch. All right, let's take a look. Well, if you took all the x coordinates and divided it by 3, then the only way that's going to happen, like say a was 3, then the x would have to be 3 times as large, because then 3 times that number divided by 3 will give you the original input. So that's why it's producing this kind of stretch. So if you replace all the x's in the original graph, by x over 3, then this original black graph will become this new red graph where horizontally it got stretched by a factor of 3. So that's because 3 was bigger than 1. So all the y coordinates remain unchanged. x coordinates, you have to have them uh, 3 times bigger, so a times bigger in order for it to happen. Another way you can think of it is it's taking twice as long or three times as long for it to travel the distance to produce the same y coordinate output because you divided it by number, so it's slowing down. Here's another example. You can see the black is the original graph, and we don't know the factor by which it got stretched by, so we'll just call it a. But x divided by a produces that stretch. So what do you think happens to horizontal compression? It's still x over a, but the a would have to be, good, smaller than 1, so between 0 and 1. So if this black is the original graph, then the red, in order to get the red, I would have to replace all the x with x divided by a, where the a is 1 third. 1 third is a number smaller than 1. So if you take a number smaller than 1, like 1 third, and you say x over 1 third, now you have horizontal compression. So if you look at 6, what input divided by 1 third will give you the, uh, the input of 6? That would have to be 2, because 2 times 3 is 6. Dividing by 1 third is multiplying by 3. So that's why it's working. Here's another example. Same thing, we don't know the factor, but it will be x divided by some number smaller than 1, causing that compression. Natural question would be, what happens if I multiply by a negative number? So let's take a look at y equals f of x. So either I look at y equals negative 3 f of x, or y divided by negative 3 equals f of x. The 3 is going to cause a vertical stretch, but the negative, all the y coordinates, instead of being positive, are negative now. So we expect it to reflect across the x-axis. So you have y over negative 3 equals f of x, or y equals negative 3 f of x. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And you can see that that causes a vertical stretch of 3, and it gets reflected across the x-axis. So a vertical reflection happens when you multiply or divide by a negative number, and then on top of it, you will get the stretch. Similarly, what happens if you have, let's say, this is my original graph, and I say, let divide x by a negative 3. So if you look, then, 4 is the x-coordinate here, but if I have negative x over 3, then I will end up with this graph, which, remember, the x over 3 causes it to stretch by horizontally by a factor of 3. And the negative, if you're taking the x and making it negative, which means it got reflected across the y-axis. So that's the effect of horizontal reflection by a factor of a if a is less than 0.